Hey boys and girls, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. We're gonna do some testing on our E-Series amplifiers today. I wanted to show you guys on my test bench. But first, a trivia question. We're gonna hook this up. The question is, what do I hook up first? Should I connect my RCAs? Should I connect my speaker wires? Should I connect my power? Should I connect my ground? Or should I connect my remote turn on? Congratulations, if you said connect the ground first, you're correct. Here's why guys and ladies. If you don't connect this first and you connect all the other things first, let's say you connect this last, you have power, connected, speaker wires don't really matter, but then you go to connect your RCAs, on the other end of this RCA, on this shield, is likely your head unit or your DSP or something else that probably has this grounded. And a lot of amplifiers inside have this grounded to the same ground where this ground goes. So if you have this connected, your power, and then you hook this up, it's gonna, the power is going to go through here and it's going to go through here and you're going to go kill your head unit, your DSP, the grounding circuit in the amp, especially on these amps because we have our clean D system which is filtering on the front end on the RCA end. You can burn that up and it might turn on and function but it might not have signal or it might have you know noises or, or other symptoms especially if you blow it up in your head unit or your DSP you're going to have whine and all kinds of things. So do yourselves a favor, make the ground the first connection. Ground first, then it doesn't matter what you do after that. Today we're gonna test the DeMore Engineering E350.2 two channel amplifier. This is 350 RMS total power output, two channels total. So we've got it hooked up to the test bench here. I'm using my 81 amp dyno as the load bank using my Audio Precision APX515 as the analyzer. Got my meter here showing battery voltage to make sure that we stay around 14.4 once it's loaded during a, a power test. But I don't wanna do just power testing because that's everybody can do that on their channels. And uh, you know, when you're designing an amplifier, there's a lot more things to making a good amplifier than just power output. So I'm not gonna do all those things because we would be here all day but I'm gonna show you some of the important things. So I'm gonna measure, uh, we're gonna measure THD, which stands for total harmonic distortion. We're actually gonna measure THD plus N, which is total harmonic distortion plus noise. So um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna measure the frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, see if it can make every sound in the human hearing range at a reasonably equal level. And we're gonna do signal to noise ratio, which is how loud can this amplifier be versus how quiet can it be? A good amplifier has to do both. And we're gonna measure power output into four ohms and two ohms, maximum clean, unclipped power. Okay, let's get started. I've got it all hooked up and uh, I realized that I should probably have a, this should be like a two camera show, but I don't have that either. So we're just gonna go as it is. I plan on doing this for all the amplifiers. This is the first one. So let's get started. Also, my audio precision can do this all automated, but it would be very fast and we wouldn't even be able to see what's going on. So I'm gonna just step through it test by test so we can really see what's happening. And we're gonna go ahead and start with this THD plus N test. So like I said, total harmonic distortion plus noise. I'm gonna play a one kilohertz tone and we're gonna see what comes out of the amplifier besides 1K, how much. There I'm running a one kilohertz tone. You can see my sine wave over here probably. And you know, if I was uh, trying to be deceitful, I would just pick a, a level, an input level that gave me the best numbers and that's what I'd put in the manual. But, um, and, and a lot, you know, that happens all the time. But uh, that's, that's not really what we do here. Uh, there's not really a good industry standard, but I like to use half power as, as, a, as a standard. Some companies will do that. So. This is rated at 90 by two into four ohms. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my level until I see about 45 watts 
by two and that'll be our half power and that'll be a good place to take a distortion reading and I found it before we started the video to be around there so that's about almost 20 volts peak out and you see I'm in the dyno here 45 watts per channel so here you go this is half power so half power signal to noise or I'm sorry total harmonic distortion plus noise 0 0.029 on the left channel 0 0.036 on the right channel that is really good for a class d amp and i expect it to be good these these use um you know these are ti texas instruments based high speed class d amplifiers with uh, full feedback loops and, and feed and output filters and the whole bit so um those are great numbers those are you know class ab kind of numbers so so that's great all right let's go on to the next test frequency response here we're going to look for 20 to 20 and there's the left and right channels there graphed on top of each other. I have the crossovers off, gain all the way down, bass boost all the way down, things like, you know, all that stuff is, is off or down as far as it goes. Totally acceptable. Uh, and that's a good result for a class D amplifier. That's pretty flat. Uh, let's see, our next test will be signal to noise ratio. So this is the, as loud as it can be versus as quiet as it can be. So what happened there is it put the signal full out until it clipped and now it's fully muted and that's the residual noise and the difference between those two is 102 dB on both channels so that's a really good number. Uh, signal to noise over 90, 95, that's great. So 102, again those are kind of class AB numbers. Um, not bad, not bad. Now some people's class AB numbers, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Don't make me bring a uh, an A1500 two in here. You'll see a, oh you'll see close to 115 over there. Uh, okay, and let's do power. Let's do four ohm maximum output. That would be this. And I'm set up to four ohms there. And let's run it now. What's going to happen is the audio precision is going to vary the level up and down. It's going to look and see when there's one percent on the output. That's going to be the number. It, you know, if you use the dyno, you would use the CD and ramp up and get the number. And uh, those two numbers are the same thing. So I have it set up like this. So it says 118 on the left channel and 115 on the right channel at four ohms. Now this is rated at 90 times two, and you can see it's exceeding that quite a bit. I'm going to watch this this time. I didn't watch this to see what kind of voltage we're dipping down into. 14.5 is as low as I saw, so maybe we're cheating a bit. I can lower it down a little bit, see if we can hit 14.4. Oh, well, now we're going to hit below 14.4, but that's all right. In fairness for, for all, I'm going to go ahead and let it dip below 14.4 and see what we get. I still expect close to 110 per channel. So I'm going to actually set this up so that it'll record it for us, and we won't even have to. Okay. And let's go. 115.8, 112.5, and we dip down to 14.3, 14.32. So overrated pretty good there. Great result at four ohms. Let's go ahead and switch this to two ohms. Move on to that test. Now we're gonna need a bit more voltage because we're gonna draw a bit more current. Let's reset this. And let's see some two ohm numbers. Mm, that seems like a lot, but okay, I'll take it. 14.24 we dropped down to, 200 on the left channel, 194 on the right channel. Pretty saucy, oh yeah, I guess it's 175 by two. So yeah, there we are. So that's it. The results for the E350.2, great performance on all those tests that we checked. Um, on to the next one.